Hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, welcome to Felt Quest. We have with us tonight Blind Lemming Chiffon from Colorado. Nice to have you here, Lem. I'm going to be going over a few things that with we us have tonight. Going on. Blind Lemming Chiffon. That's my technical difficulty. I always have a another youtube open and i always forget to turn the volume down on it so i get a feedback for the first three seconds it's kind of a tradition i have on this channel i think it's a great goddess echo yes great goddess echo so i'm going to go over uh, a couple of things that we have coming up on the channel then i'm going to say hi to everybody and then we'll get into talking to them so how's everybody doing tonight um Got a couple things uh, that are going on. Friday night's Critical Not Cynical is going to be a Nick Cook film from uh, Starship Intrepid. And it is a treasure for all ages. So that's what we'll be doing on Friday night at 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, 10 o'clock um, Central. Uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday night, we are going to be starting the Farragut, Starship Farragut, uh, series. We're going to be playing that, uh, from August 1st, and I think there's five or six weeks we have of that. We're going to do the animated, and we're going to do each episode. So we're starting off with their first episode called The Captaincy. <clears throat> and... Don't think Vance has anything else. Uh, NerdTube, uh, if you've noticed, has started doing some of their stuff on our channel. So welcome them to the channel. Um, so you'll be seeing Zam and, and uh, Cousin Cheeto doing some stuff here and there. And we're excited to have them working on and off with us on the channel. So. Once again, welcome everybody. Let's see who we have in the chat. First of all, we have Mr. Mondo himself, Larry Kirby, who says simply hi. Are you simply hi, Larry? I didn't realize that. Good grass or what? <laughs> and, I have to lean over like this to see the comments. Oh, right. I probably won't do that. Okay, and then we have Claude Sailing. How you doing tonight, Claude? Hey, Claude. And then, hey, and then we have we have an old buddy of yours. I don't know how he pronounces that. Moss. Hello, Moss. Watch out for low flying hippos. And let's see. What does Moss say? This is going to be interesting. To fair interviewing a lemming. That's true, and then good, and we have Larry again, and Captain Baxley. How you doing this evening? Okay, so welcome everybody uh, once again. There we go, and welcome to our special guest, our guest Lem. Why well, Lemming? All right, so my first question is going to be why blind lemming chiffon? Um, why does a chicken eat, eat gooseberries? Okay, why? <laughs> well, it's all explained somewhere on the internet so that I don't have to talk about it. So that means I have to look that up. I, I It might be on my website. I don't know. I haven't looked at my website in a long time. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to insult anybody, I, but I did when I was younger. So when I was younger, I put that under blind lemming snappy answers to stupid questions. So blind lemming Japan, what's your name? Um, yeah. Uh-huh. All righty. 
So what's your next question? Well, Robin. So how long have you been filking? Um, if you count listening to Alan Sherman records in 1963 and reading Mad Magazine, a long, long time. I heard about filking for the first time in about 1974 in Don Thompson's science fiction class at Metropolitan State College. Don Thompson was a big name fan locally. He, he was one of the people who started up the Denver science fiction group, DASVA, and he was, um, he was nominated for a Hugo Award, I think, in 1975 or 85. 75, yeah, it was when I, back when I was going to school. And he didn't win it for, for fan writing. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long time. My first convention was like 1976 or 7. And, yeah, yeah, I've been doing this a while. Quite a while. So what got you into filking? I, I think, well, I'd already been writing songs. I, I The first real big filk I went to was at the Worldcon in 79, and I just ran into Juanita Coulson hanging out, and I read her name badge, and I said, ooh, I've heard of you. Where is, where is the singing? And she told me, and I forgot. And then my friend and I were tired, and we went off to sleep in a in an empty meeting room, as you do when you're young and going to a world con. And people came in and turned the lights on, and it turned out to be Juanita Coulson and a bunch of pilkers. And my friend and I stayed up all night. So that was one of my introductions. Then there was Mile High Con in about 1981, where I was in the con suite, I believe, hanging out with Moss, who was called something else then, and Ann Prather and Kathy Marr, and just trading songs. And I've been friends with all of them since then. So, yeah, it's been a while. That's good. Uh, so, um, what instruments are you playing now? I know you play uke. This is an eight string ukulele made by Kamaka, it's a tenor. Um, there's another name for eight string ukulele. Oh yeah, tarot patch. Uh, an eight string ukulele is also called a tarot patch. T-A-R-O-P-A-C-H. Never heard of that before. Yeah, well now you have. <laughs> Donna has an eight string, I picked her up one. <laughs>
yeah, that, that's the eight string ukulele. And Madison says, "Hi, Madison. How you doing tonight?" Hey, still, Madison. Still love your root, uh, living room set. Yeah. Well, let's have a tour. <laughs> that's the other wall, and let's see. Can we get to my TV? There's my TV, and now the cord is pulling, and I have to go back. And uh, you never see that wall or the next room, but there we go. Yeah, there's a tour of my living room. There, there, we, there we go. <laughs> if any of you are in Denver next, well, this coming Saturday, I'm having a, a meeting of Denver Filk here in my living room, and I'm inviting vaccinated persons. So, yeah. And if none of you are going to be in Denver, well, maybe one day, you know, I've had ama some amazing people pass through my living room hosting these filk things. I've had, gosh, I've had Dave Clement, Kathy Marr just recently. Yeah, lots of people. So, yeah, any, pretty much anybody, if you're going to be in town, let me know. So how, how often do you have your house built? It's usually once a month and it's, it's, we're switching back to Saturdays now. So it's going to be on the last Saturday of the month. So you guys are basically the one, one, yeah, once a month, like mass filk is from that point, because uh, that's one thing that Larry and I could never get was a monthly built going down here. We basically do it twice a year uh, down at his house and have it down there. You, we, I, I hear house. that's a big old party. That is a fantastically big party. Um, and if you're out in the area, we'd love to have you there, Lem. I know, I know. I, I don't get down there much just crawling around because it's kind of out of my territory. But I, I am planning a trip to the East Coast, oh, I don't know, next spring or summer sometime. But I'll be a little bit north of you, like around New York City. Yeah, up there. Well, I don't know, maybe I could crawl down if, if it was on the right weekend. You never know. Things have, stranger things have happened. You're allowed you know, I used to live in New York City. Everything there was dark and dirty. And as, as to the rest of the song, it doesn't necessarily apply to me. <laughs> Let's see. I was told I'm a little bit louder than you. Oh, well, we can fix that. I'm not sure where my volume control on this is. But this package is sold by weight, not by volume. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Larry says we're not at the end of the earth, but we're at we're in the same zip code. Oh, you got the right key, baby, but the wrong keyhole. You did it. Oh wait, no, that's wrong. Never mind. Are, are we into insta filking? <laughs> no, that's an old song. Uh, it's on a Louis Armstrong record, sung by. It's not Lily Delt Christian, it's the Bertha Chippy Hill. Bertha Chippy Hill sang that up with Louis the Louis Armstrong band back in the twenties. So who I is, have such a memory. I was gonna say, so who is your um what inspires your music? What inspires my music? Um gosh. <laughs> Nothing, nothing inspires it. It's just there. So have you been writing since you uh, were a wee, wee little? Well, when I, when I was a kid picking up Mad Magazine, I, I got the idea that you could make fun of songs that way. I think the first one I remember making fun of was the Howdy Doody song. And, ooh, do I want to put that on national youtube i don't think so it just starts out it's howdy doody time it isn't worth a dime and then i say mean things about clarabelle and it 
you know, I've gotten to be more mellow since I was a kid, and I don't want to say those things. So, yeah. You don't want to tarnish your reputation? I mean, the rhyme for Clarabelle is just a little too obvious. So, <laughs> no, no, that wasn't a great song. I got better as time went on. And I... Hi, U-S-S-A-R-N-G. How you doing tonight? Hmm. I can't see any of the comments. I guess that's my fault. I, I went low tech. I'm on my phone because my computer wanted me to download things to get on here. And Yeah, well, I'll keep that in mind. I'll let people know if they're coming in on a Mac. As I said, I'm really surprised that... Uh, it didn't let you do that. Uh, it was being mean to me. Sometimes my computer just doesn't like me. Howdy doody, too. I was too young, but my dad may have watched it with my older brother. Oh, God, now I feel old because I, I watched Howdy Doody when Howdy Doody was on. <laughs> yeah, well, now, now I feel old. I'm so old. Yeah. I, I, well, yeah, I do a lot of music from the, from quite long ago. Let's see, what's the oldest song I know? Um, I'm switching to my guitar. So those are your two main instruments, I take it. Bonnie Charlie's now a Safely o'er the friendly main, and money art will break in twine. Should he no come back again? Will he no come back again? Will he no come back again? Those are the two I have out. I have hundreds. Let's see, do I have another instrument over here? I think I do. Oh, you also play banjo, too. I play five-string banjo, banjo mandolin, banjo guitar, and banjo uke. And native flute. That's an old Native American tune called Secret Agent Man. Yes, I heard that. Yes. Must have been uh, Chippewa. Uh, yeah, Chippewa of the old block. So tell me, what did you do during the pandemic with music? Well, um, let's see, just before the pandemic, um, between January and February, I went to three film cons in, well, I probably, I might have seen you in Georgia, in Atlanta. Well, it, it's not actually in Atlanta, it's in a little place outside of Atlanta, where the airport is. Then, then I went to the uh, state of Washington, um, Seattle, for the conflict. Then I went to a place just outside of London for the uh, UK PhilCon. And as I was coming back from there in February, I, I saw people at the airport, mostly Chinese looking people. I don't, I don't know, I didn't ask them where they were from, but wearing masks. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then about a month later, we all found out. <sighs> and that was right around the time that we were supposed to have consonants, the PhilCon in San Jose, California. And consonants was canceled kind of at the last minute, with like within a week or two before the convention, they announced that they were canceling. 
<coughs> well, I said, we, I, that creates a vacuum. I'm going to do something that weekend. I'm going to like do a concert or something on the internet. And then my, my friend, um, I'm picturing her and I can't think of her name. Really wonderful singer, Summer, Summer Russell in, out in California also wanted to do a concert that weekend. And I said, well, hey, we should coordinate this so we can both listen to each other because I want to hear you. And out of that grew a list of other people who also wanted to play. And we wound up doing a three-day FiltCon, not on Zoom yet. We, the the uh, evening stuff was on Zoom, but the concerts were on Facebook that time. <coughs> And then it worked out two months later, we did it again, and the whole thing was on Zoom. And I've done, number 10 is happening in September. I've done one every two months since. So I've had 108 people on my online film con so far. So what do you call this? It's called Festival of the Living Rooms, and it's held right here in my living room. And you have quite a few people that just drop in on your Zoom channel. Well, it, it works out that, well, some of them are in their living rooms and some of them are in their kitchens and some are elsewhere in their house. But tradition says that they're supposed to be in their living rooms. But I figure if you're in a room and you're living, it's a living room, right? Well, it sure beats the alternative. Technically, I call this room I'm going to pull this off the tripod for a moment. I call this room my garden because I define my rooms by the ceilings. Okay. The next room over is called my aquarium because I have various fish hanging from the ceiling. Interesting. What do you call your kitchen? I, I call that, I have a poster in there from the Roadkill Cafe, so, yeah. Yeah, that, what, what, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, that's not Eddie on Brown. the ceiling, but the ceiling is just blue, so what can I do? Um, then the bathroom, I, I break tradition, and I call that my natatorium. Look it up. Yeah, that one I'd have to look up. <laughs> it, it means a room with a swimming pool in it. Oh, okay. It's Indoor first time swimming pool. That. Yeah, natatorium. Isn't that a great word? Yeah, yeah I it is. It's from Archie Comics. So you read a lot of comic books? I used to. Everything I ever learned, I learned from comic books. For instance, my, my favorite comic book was Herbie, not the Volkswagen, the, the heavy child. And um, Herbie's neighbor was a mad scientist, a professor, and he invented things. For example, he invented pancake syrup with built-in bubbles so that you could eat an entire stack, stack of pancakes and never have to come up for air. Hmm, like that idea. Mm, I'm diabetic now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, yeah. <laughs> so, why don't you do us another song on your gift fiddle or whatever? A song. I, I'm, I was doing some of my old songs that I did. This was one before I actually got into filking. I did a lot of blues songs and blues parodies and stuff like that. I used to go to this place, the Denver Folklore Center. And it moved and, and it still exists, but they used to have like a concert hall just down the street. And, and it was like, at the time that I went there, they had a bead shop and it was full of hippies. And it was a, an amazing place back in the 60s. That's where I learned to play guitar. Well, I played guitar before that, but... I 
was like that, and that now I play like this. I went down to the record store. I bought the blue. They cost eleven ninety eight. There was on compact disc. I could have bought a pair of shoes. I could have bought two pairs of shoes. There was a Goodwill store right down the street from there, but I bought them anyhow because I like that funky music. I set my blues down on my CD player pad. The blues was boring. The blues was bad. It's bad. Those low down rotten, no good blues caused me the last 11.98 I most ever had. I got the blues, but I don't want them. I'm going to take them on back to the store where I bought them. I found out. Now I'm telling all of you. The blues ain't nothing but the blues. That's all it is. The blues ain't red. The blues ain't green. The blues ain't even blue, man. I, I'm telling you, and he, here's what I mean. The blues ain't yellow. The blues ain't chartered. The blues ain't nothing but the blues. The blues are not melodious. The blues are not cheerful. Well, not much. But pay eleven ninety eight. You're bound to get an earful. I found out the real news. The blues ain't nothing but the blues. That's called I Bought the Blues and the Blues Won. <laughs> Very good. I wrote that back in the 70s. Originally, it, it involved records and a turntable, but I changed it to CDs because nobody remembers what those things are anymore. Well, I don't know. I, I, I hear there's a resurgent of uh, vinyl now. So. Yeah, that's what I hear, but I don't know. I, I think it was a long time ago, and I, I think I passed my vinyl exam, and now I'm over with it. I know that uh, here the new thing is for music to just be digital and and there not be an object involved, which is annoying to me because I like to collect autographs. Get be like autograph. Air guitar. How do you autograph an ebook? That's what I want to know. You give it a digital signature. But that doesn't increase the resale value. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You, you can't actually sell, resell an ebook on eBay. Now, what's up with that? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, situation because, you know, the one thing is you don't have to worry about your uh, your tapes breaking. Or your records getting scratched, but I understand. Yeah, I mean, a good book and uh, pages to turn a lot better than reading that on a Kindle. Did Did you see my Victrola earlier? It's It's over there somewhere. I'm trying to let's see. I thought I saw black thing. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work, but I have a Victrola in my living room. It's actually a graphinola, but nobody knows what a graphinola is, so I say Victrola. I've heard of that someplace before. It's the same thing, but it's a different brand. Victrola is sort of like scotch tape. That everybody calls all the other brands of tape scotch tape, even though they're not, or Band-Aids. 
it, yeah. it needs it needs to have a dog sitting on it. Yeah. I, I I thought of doing what like a parody of that for an album cover with a with a lemming <laughs> sitting by the sitting by the, the old, old oh, controller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, somebody pointed this out earlier. You're a ferret, and I'm a lemming. I think ferrets are predators of lemmings. Out in the wild, I know. I know. A animals of the weasel and stoat family are lemming predators. Are 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 ferrets related to stoats and weasels? Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, Dang it. Yeah. A lot. A lot of um, European. Ferrets are are direct descent. Well, not descendants, but uh, they're related to pole cats. So, do you do you actually have any ferrets? Uh, we have not had ferrets in a while, uh, though. At separate times, I've had seven. Donna's had seven. So, if we had met when we both had seven ferrets, we'd have fourteen, and probably less hair than I have now. Wow. Um do, do they cut down on the rodent population? Actually, the domesticated ferret has been so interbred and fed a sub. A, yeah, the food is very much like cat food, like dog food, cat food, that they don't, very few are hunters now. Very few. Oh, uh, well, darn. I, I hear snakes are good for catching mice. Yeah, black snakes and stuff like but that. But then what do you get to catch the snakes? That's the question. You get a black snake. Black snakes will eat other snakes. Oh, then what do you get to eat them? I Wasn't there a song about that once? Um, I know an old woman who swallowed a fly. Yeah, it, it gets bad after a while. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. A week. So, Aaron. what else is going on? Oh, did I mention over this past, um, what do you call it, the uh, the intermission, the the plague, the uh, timeout? I I did I did another thing. Well, actually, I got a call in January, and I knew about this, and then I put on that. Uh, that first festival of the living rooms in March. And who was it? It was Margaret Middleton was saying, oh, oh gosh, is it too late? We need to nominate this guy for, for a Phil Call of Fame. And I, I couldn't say anything, but I knew I was already gonna be in the Phil Call of Fame when they had FKO in April. So I, I'm in the Phil Call of Fame. So I'm, I'm like famous, famous now. Cool, cool. Congratulations. Explain for those who are not filters out there uh, what the Phil Hall of Fame is. It, it's sort of like it's sort of like other halls of fame, except there aren't any trading cards. The the benefits of it are your name is recorded on the Phil Hall of Fame site, which is part of the Phil Ontario website. And I think we get a plaque, but I haven't gotten mine yet because I'll get it the next time I go to Phil Ontario, which I hope is in April. And you get to sing some songs in, in the Phil Call of Fame concert. So it's it's kind of cool. You ever won a Peggy? Uh, there, there's there been a lot of them. I think they do, on average, about two or three of them a year and it's been going on for probably about 20 years now give or take yeah that sounds about right I'm trying to think of what they so start. eventually every everybody in the entire phil community will be in the phil call of fame but unfortunately by that time we'll all be dead most likely most likely damn it but just think of the legacy nobody will know us for yeah you know what i i think it's like probably the coolest thing that's ever happened 
I'm very proud to be in it. So. And, I, and it is, it's, it's, that's a nice thing for peer recognition. And that, you know, I, I, you know it's, it's really, really a, a great achievement. A couple of weeks ago, I had Kathy Marr and Kathleen Sloan here in my living room with me doing a, doing a Kathy Marr concert on my festival. And uh, I said, I realized, hey, we're, we're all in the Phil Call of Fame here. Wow. Huh? Yeah, I, I know people. I'll have my people get together with your people. Is it time for another song yet? Yes, you can sing another song. What what song should I sing? Oh, I know. I'll do another one of my my parodies because people seem to like those. Yeah, I'm putting on my picks. I play a nylon string ukulele with metal finger picks. Can you see these? Yes, I can. Well, there they are. Yeah, and a metal thumb pick. I'm trying to think of how the song goes. Yeah. Over the rainbow is a big thing in the ukulele world and they do it mixed up with this other song because some guy had kind of a ukulele hit with it, with a medley, but I don't play it over the rainbow that way. I play it this way. Beside me, where all the little lemmings drop, just like a can of soda pop. Please, someone guide me, because I'm blind, you know. So you were asking earlier about my name. Well, I'm not actually blind, and that's the first thing people notice. And then they forget to notice that I'm also not a suicidal Norwegian rodent, and lemmings don't actually commit suicide. That is a myth. And I'm also not a fluffy dessert. So you see, it's a thing to test people for their superficiality. So that's one purpose of the name. And there are many others, but that's just one. You know, it's interesting that you said that. I was reading an article just last week about lemmings, and the re the, re the fact is that is pretty much a myth. And what well, it it's is a myth, and it was also perpetuated by a Disney ex yeah. newsreel type thing, and he had to actually <laughs> do electric shocks on the lemmings to make them jump which I thought was, yeah, I, yeah. That was very cruel. It was extremely. It's like Edison and the elephant. 
I do not care much for Walt Disney. No. No, no not at all. So now that you've done the Festival of the Living Room, what do you think of the future of filking on? I saw something that you wrote the other day where now that we've gotten back into, you know, going back to conventions that you're going to be pulling back. But do you still think it's going to be part of our legacy to do that? I think it's here to stay. I know I'm going to keep on doing it. I think the uh, Filk Bites people have said they're keeping on going. Um, there are a whole lot of people doing music online of all kinds. And I think there's been more of it since the pandemic. And I think people have all learned to do it now. And I think they're going to keep on doing it because one of the things that you can't do with a live concert or a live festival or a live convention is get all the people all over the planet who can't afford to travel to one place to come together and sing for each other. We've had, well, I, I at the Festival of the Living Rooms, we've had people from everywhere, Australia, Germany, other parts of Europe, England, all parts of England, Scotland, Canada. Haven't had anyone from Hawaii yet, but working on it. I don't think, are there any filters that we know of in Hawaii? I don't believe there are. I, anybody out there know of anybody that lives in Hawaii? I don't, I haven't heard of one, but there are filters in Australia. I don't know about New Zealand. But yeah, um, and my my friend Randy Hoffman did, had a coup last this past weekend, getting um, a filker from. He's the only filker I know who lives in anywhere in the continent of Asia. Um, what's his name? Karen Schwa. Karen Schwa. Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, well, so so we've had filters from like everywhere man yeah yeah i, I think that's I, I i've been asking that question during these uh, during this program and or, or this uh, podcast and i think that's what everybody's pretty much uh seeing it as a new way of, of uh you know getting together with people that we don't see all the time or we wouldn't have the chance sort of like an online interfil in a way now, the one thing I've done with my thing, and some other people have emulated this and some have not, and that's cool, is I've made it absolutely free. There's no money. There's, well, I spent some money on it, but I don't ask for any money from anybody in any way. People have offered to donate money, and I said no. Because, I, I first of all, if people donated money to this, I would feel obligated to give that money to the performers and it wouldn't be enough. And then I'd have to do all sorts of bookkeeping and I'd be an actual business and I'd have to get a nonprofit thing and it would, it would, it would just be insane. And I'd have to file tax returns and eh, so no. I've, I've made it free. Now there are other filkers who ask for money and stuff on, and the individual filkers who are on Festival of Living Rooms, especially the ones who are professional musicians, I've told them it's perfectly okay to put your Venmo sign out and ask for money and people might donate. And it's of course okay to try to sell your CDs and stuff. And what CDs and your online songs and whatever, and your Patreons and this and that. and. I, I people haven't really told me, but I suspect people have made like ten or twenty dollars or so off of being on Festival of the Living Rooms, and that's fine. But I don't want to get involved with money. Yeah, and I mean that's that's pretty much our uh, take on here on on No Budget Productions, Phil Prayer Productions. And because there are other folks out there who do online music for money. There are some of them in our community. And people keep asking me, well, why don't you have on so-and-so? Well, so-and-so 
does videos like this and they do it for money and they don't want to do it for free and that's okay and please support them. See, I just say we don't get any money for anything we do on this channel. We're not a monetized channel. We do Star Trek stuff. So that number one, we don't want anything to deal with money because of copyright and everything else. Yeah, I, I don't worry about that. But I, I did I did post a link on the Festival of the Living Rooms group for there's a concert upcoming. It's over two days with Vixie and Tony and their band and Sonny Larson and Alex and Betsy and I don't I, I think that's there there might be somebody else that I'm leaving out, but they're doing a two day outdoor concert with all with various people at various times and they're selling tickets and trying to get a little bit of money out of it. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear some of this or all of it and I hope to get to hear it and I'll probably buy myself a ticket and go. And you've got to support people who are trying to get money from their music because if you don't support music, music will go away. I don't know if it would go away, but it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, and everybody that comes on this show, I say, hey, look, if you've got something to pitch, go ahead. You know, I've had the delivering humdingers on here, made sure all their stuff was down at the bottom. I want them to make it. I We, we don't care. We do this for fun. And, you know, and that's one of the greatest things that I saw during the uh the brief vacation we've had for the last year and a half is the fact that there were a lot of people out there pushing people to go to the sites of the people like Mick, Mikey Mason and stuff like that, who actually are making a living there and, you know, supporting them that way. Uh, while the rest of us, like, you know, the, the festival of the living room and stuff like that, we're just having fun. And to me, it's a house film. You know, you don't get paid for a house film. You have a great time. Yeah, well, in the Festival of the Living Rooms, I've had some professional musicians that I've brought in, um, folks like um, Beth Patterson. And at Beth Patterson, I said, oh, put put your sign out and oh, yeah. ask yeah. for money. And she's wonderful. Look her, if you haven't heard Beth, look her up, because, wow. She's just freaking amazing. And I've had uh, Steve Goody on a couple of times comedian and mm. songwriter out of Nashville and he's done some really funny stuff look up his Big Bang Theory song <laughs> that is a riot Goody G-O-O-D-I-E yeah. yeah as a matter of fact I think I have him as a friend on uh, Facebook Yeah, and I, and I found him because of the festival of the living room as a matter of fact <laughs> you, you should look up his Big Bang song that is a riot he shall do so. Yeah, I, I love promoting and helping other musicians when I can. I think that's part of the uh, community. I think that I think we all like doing that, and you know, a good portion of us. I do. I mean, we do have our well, we do have our prima donnas. There's no doubt about it. Well, some of it is bringing music to people, and some of it is bringing people to music. Uh, one of the things I'm proud of, a few years ago, I, I have a friend, Peter, who is very, very, just loves Janicean. And there was a Janicean concert, and I was a supporter of the place, and I had extra tickets that I could get to a, a, anything if I wanted to. And I invited Peter to come hear Janicean. Well, Peter's got a disabled daughter that takes a lot of, like all of his time, plus just bought a big house that, and he, his job takes up like so much time and he doesn't have time to do anything. And getting him away just to hear Janice Ian and hear that concert, I think it was that, was, that was wonderful to see how happy he was. So, yeah, I like to bring people to music, and I like to bring music to people. That's great. That's great. So where are you going to be over the next few months? 
Where am I going to be? Well, between now and the middle of October, I'm going to be right here. Then in October, I'll be at Ohio Valley Folk Festival in just, just a bit outside of Columbus. And then I'm going to Lascon in the Los, near the Los Angeles airport, which is combined with Westercon. I got a ticket because I bought a ticket for Westercon last year and of course didn't go. And they combined and so I got a free ticket for this thing. I said, what the heck, I'm going. And I had airfare that I hadn't used up that was left over from credits that I had that I got back because my airfares were all canceled. And I had some free hotel nights. So basically I'm going to Lascon and it's not costing me more than about a couple hundred bucks. Not bad. So yeah. And then in December, I am going to visit a friend in DC for a couple of days. We have plans to go to the uh, Holocaust Museum, which I've wanted to see for a very long time. And then we have plans to go to the African, -Amer African American History Museum, nice. which I've also wanted to see. There's a guitar there. They have Lead Belly's guitar on display. Ooh. Well, I have a connection to that guitar. My aunt was a folky in the 1940s in New York, and she went to a concert, and being a young female person, Lead Belly had a tendency to invite young female people up on stage to play his guitar and stuff. So she says, yeah, I, I got up on stage to play Lead Belly's guitar. And I said to her, well, was it that famous Stella 12 string, that, which is one of the iconic collectible guitars because it's a cheap crummy guitar but lead belly made it sound like a million dollars and and nowadays stella 12 strings if you can find one it, that's still in one piece because they tended to fall apart they go for thousands of dollars now and that that stella 12 string that my aunt played is in a glass case in a museum in washington dc and then after I go to the museums with my friend and have a good time for a couple of days, we're, we're going to the Worldcon. Nice, nice. So, yeah, I've got some plans. Going to be at Gefilk this year? Uh, Gefilk has said they're going to be live, so if nothing happens between now and then, yes. I haven't bought any tickets yet. Yeah, I have to see. We haven't been to the filth ourselves in a few years, so. Well, that's your fault. Yeah, I know. We've been, we've had a, we've been doing a couple things, uh, uh, such as MarsCon, and uh, it was uh, that's around that time, and then RavenCon. So, we'll see. I should get back to the filth. We haven't been there in a while, but anyways. Well, you know, the first house concert I ever went to, I didn't even know what a house concert was. And I was volunteering at Swallow Hill, which is a big folk music venue. And one of my fellow volunteers was passing out these little cards, inviting people to a house concert in his, in his backyard. And it said on the card, if you don't come to hear Mike West, it's your own damn fault. <laughs> so I, I thought, wow. That's some advertising. So I went, and this guy being my friend said, well, how would you like to do a song or two to open for the guy? So I happened to have my ukulele with me, because I almost always do. And I did. No, wait, that time I didn't. It was the next time. But I, I, over a period of five or six years, I opened for all sorts of people in my friend's backyard. So I've, I'm, I'm like... Wow. Hey, the most famous people that I've shared a stage with, um, back in the 70s, a friend said, hey, let's go up to play on the stage at Red Rocks, which is a big outdoor amphitheater just outside of Denver. And so we went and played on the stage at Red Rocks, and there were these people out there that were a little drunk, and they were throwing glass beer bottles down on the stage. <laughs> and so we kind of left right then. 
and the police chimed were up at the top of the stairs or at the bottom of the stairs i can't remember it was it was a long time ago and they shined these flashlights in our faces and we couldn't see and they said what are we do doing there and we said you ought to really go arrest the drunk people who were throwing glass bottles on the stage and that wasn't us and they let us go but in 1963 the Beatles, was it 63 or 64? I think it was, oh no, it was 64. In 1964, the Beatles played on the stage at Red Rocks. So I've shared a stage with the Beatles. <laughs> okay. Not at the same time, mind you. Yes, I, I figured at that point. Okay, well, we're coming up on top of the hour. Uh, do want to thank you for coming on. You're welcome back anytime you'd like. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you to play us out. Um, let me put my claws on here. Just uh, while he's putting his claws on, I just wanted to let you know that next week, Mr. Moss, you're up. Oh, cool. Maybe yeah, I Moss have to tune in for that one. Yeah. Um, da -da 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 this yeah. is the first time I've watched one of these, you know. Go back and watch them all if you want. Oh, I should introduce my song. Song, audience, audience, song. Sounds good. a medley of Sugar in the Morning and Hooray for Captain Spaulding, both <laughs> featured in Marx Brothers films. Okay. Well, once again, Lamb, thanks for coming on. And uh, we shall run into each other, I'm sure, in the future at some con. But uh, yeah, uh, just before we go, when, should, when did you say you were going to have your next... Uh, um september the dates are published on the web on on the facebook group i haven't i committed them to memory yet okay so i think it's the second to the last weekend in september okay very good and that's under the festival of the living room and that you can catch on youtube and, and apparently we're the same weekend as a live con in texas and people were complaining about that but you know what Oh, well, we're going to be competing with live cons all the time. There, there is a, at least one convention on every weekend of the year. So you're bound to, you know, at well, I'm least. I'm trying one. not to conflict with filk cons, and this one is one that attracts a bunch of filkers. I can't think of the name of it right offhand, but yeah. But hey, almost like November. I couldn't find a weekend that didn't have at least two or three conventions that were featuring filking people. And two of the weekends, the people who were doing them all combined, I think I combined with two other conventions in November to do mine. Yeah. Yeah, so you just do what you can and go to the one. I mean, it's going to go all weekend, so you can hit both, you know. Well, play. if it's online, you can, and if it's not, you can't. And something to think about and something to talk about is live cons featuring a an online presence and increasing that for people. Yeah, uh, Consolation, uh, Continual is one of those in our area. 
that uh, has been working with Con Carolines and stuff like that. So they've been doing online content as well as the live con. So it's been interesting. I think it's crazy and wonderful. I, I've been doing Denver Filk, the last one, and this next one coming up have been mixed online and live. So yeah. anyway, it's it's getting to that time, and we, we should let people go. Thank you. Take care, everybody, and thank you for coming. Uh, see you next week, and we'll see you for Critical Not Cynical and the Farragut Films on Sunday. So everybody take care, and have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye-bye.